My name is Peter Moore. I'm a historian of the 18th and 19th century, specifically the bridge between Georgian and Victorian England. And I'm just finishing off a book about the first weather forecasts, which happened in the 1860s. Um, it's called The Weather Experiment. The Weather Experiment is um, an exploration into history, um, into the evolution of a scientific idea that we can um, look into the future, that we can see what's going to come in terms of weather. Um, if we look back 200 years ago, people didn't know um, why the sky was blue, uh, why winds blew from a particular direction, uh, what snow was. Um, there was lots of fundamentals about the atmosphere which still remained complete mysteries. And I thought this was an interesting starting point to see how you could get from that point to a point 60 years later, whereby people are beginning to predict to say what's going to happen one day, one day in advance, which was um, a really revolutionary thing to do. So instead of being safe and conservative weather forecasters that we think of today, um, in their sharp suits, for example, in their kind of quite polished exteriors, we actually go back to these scientists that were rebels of their time, that were challenging the establishment, challenging the way that people thought about, about life, because people believed that God was in control of the future. People would say crime, science are too completely different uh, subjects to be looking at. Um, but it, a lot of what you learn um, with primary source material, with like kind of developing characters, crafting stories, um, becoming familiar with the sources of the time, all of these are common. And I'd like to think that people who read and enjoyed the first book would be able to find the same, um, the same in the second, because you, you again, you have the characters that you can follow and you have the quest towards uh, the end, which in this point is a scientific quest. I began writing from a young age and then went into journalism. And I only really seriously started writing long form in 2008 when I started a master's course at City University, which was in creative writing. The masters gave me the framework within which to write, which, you know, kind of it's tricky when you're in your 20s and you're living a London lifestyle and it's quite busy and you're going out all the time to find the time that you need to write long form. Um, so as much as anything else, it gave me a framework to do that. And ever since, I've, I've just kept going. And uh, what I did on that masters became my first book, which was called Damn His Blood. And um, that's where I began and I progressed from that. I think um, the most useful piece of advice I could give to anyone who wants to get into writing um, is, is read. Um, not all great readers make really good writers, but you'll find that most good writers read a lot. They're good readers. Um, so read as much as you can, read challengingly, um, read promiscuously, go from genre to genre. Um, and I think that's a really good start for you because then that's where you kind of develop your ideas. And um, a second thing is uh, is find a way of maybe isolating yourself away because you really have to find and and cherish your time to yourself when you can think and write. So one day is maybe not enough. Five days in a row is good. So try and find blocks of, of time when you can think, which is tricky in today's world when <clears throat> there's so many distractions. And finally, um, the easiest way to fail is playing safe. So take risks and be bold, I think. My daily routine is um, doesn't exist because I've never managed to have two days that are the same as each other. I do, um, I, you know, I think all writers work in their own distinct way and any way is fine as long as it works for you. Um, I generally go to the British Library um, when I can and sit in a dusty corner of um, a room that I'm not going to reveal to you, which is uh, populated by writers who all kind of exist in in a kind of silence. It's like the Diogenes Club in, in Sherlock Holmes. We all go in there. We all know who each other are by sight, but we have no idea what anybody else does. So we're all in there every day, um, working away, ignoring each other, but happy in each other's company nonetheless. So that's generally what I try and do as much as possible, and I find the British Library is the most productive place to work because you're away from all the tools of procrastination that you have in your house. I think books challenge, good books challenge conventions. So as I said before, the idea that you, you take something which is as established a part of daily life as, as the weather forecast. 
and you take it to pieces and say, well, hang on, this hasn't always been here. So let's go back to uh, the year 1703, for example, when there was the greatest storm that ever hit the UK. It came in from the west over the Welsh coast and devastated um, great portions of southern England. In that case, no one knew what was coming. It was a nice, blue, breezy afternoon in November and people were just carrying on with their daily tasks. And so if you think back to that moment um, of how vulnerable we are to the weather um, and then compare it to today, when we have notice of, for example, St Jude's storm, which came last, um, last October, November time, uh, when we were told five days in advance before it had even happened. Now, that's a really, uh, was before it had even formed in the Atlantic. So that's a really interesting bit of science. And um, to get people to think about these things in the first place is a really exciting challenge, and to bring history to life in a way which is accessible and vibrant and, and, um, and appeals to people. That's what I'm trying to do.